So you may have watched a video that was on building these desks that attach to the wall. And in the room behind me is the music room, which is where the, the video, the last video we did, which I'll put a link in the description, for making that one. Well, after I made that one, we made another one for this office room that I actually do most of my work in. And fairly quickly, sitting in front of this during COVID lockdown on the plastic floor mat that I was sitting on, we ran into some serious problems with the floor mat. And if you want to take a look here at this uh, video of the cracks that formed in that chair mat, including even though I had uh, the roller blade wheels, which are the softer uh, wheels that are a little bit, you know, supposed to be nicer on flooring uh, and even supposed to sort of work on carpet. Well, this thick basement carpet that I've got, they didn't work at all. And the plastic floor mats eventually like cracked and were breaking apart. And so I had this idea because I also had a box or two of some of the click together flooring. And this was actually solid wood version of it. It was not the laminate, but this project would absolutely work with a laminate. It would work with a vinyl. It would work with any of these floorings that sort of just click together. And the idea was, well, what if we put a piece of that flooring down and that becomes my chair mat? Well, if we just had just put the, the click together flooring, that wasn't going to work. We needed there to be some sort of substrate because that's actually how you would install it on a real floor. You would put it on top of a plywood underlayment or something similar. So I thought, well, let's at least try this idea out and see how well it works. So we took a four by four, so half of a four by eight sheet of plywood, and we took one box of the flooring and these box, most of those kinds of click together flooring come in boxes that are somewhere between 16 and like 25 square feet. And so a four by four for a box that is 16 plus feet means that one box makes one floor mat. And we took those pieces out glued them and nailed them down to the piece of plywood and we left it as is slapped it down on the floor here and i spent most of a year or so sitting on that as my primary floor mat now the downside to that was there was no edge on it and so if i wasn't careful and i slid back like this i would go off the back uh, it only happened a couple of times and it's only an inch because we're talking three quarters of an inch and then an inch of a uh, quarter inch of the flooring it's only an inch but that inch feels like you fell off the back of a cliff. Uh, so it became a little bit of a problem uh, that I just had to sort of pay very close attention to. But we had not wanted to go through the effort of putting the trim on until we were sure that the flooring and the plywood part of it was going to work out. Well, that experiment worked out. And so we ended up at a point where it was time to try the trim. So I'm going to step you through uh, in, in a drawing here what we did to sort of our, our initial thoughts about how we were gonna do trim, which is like way back when the idea first came up, what problems we saw with that, and then the things that we thought about, things we even uh, tried a little bit, didn't like how they worked, and what we ended up actually doing, all right? So the first version I'm gonna start with was, was we had our quarter inch of flooring, all right? So this is flooring. All right, so that is our flooring. And then we had one, two, three quarters of an inch of plywood. All right, so this is effectively what I was sitting on for most of the last year. All right, so what we were originally going to do was to take essentially a one by two. So something that is three quarters of an inch wide and Three, uh, an inch and a half high, and we were just going to glue this seam here and uh, put in pin nails to clamp it in place and rely on glue to, do, glue to do it. Aaron rightfully pointed out that as soon as a wheel was present here and was pushing against this, we've effectively created a, a lever here, which is going to pull really aggressively on this joint and was highly likely to pop this joint loose. So we abandoned that idea and decided to try something else. All right. 
So for our next idea, we thought we would get clever and we would make, so if we take our quarter inch of flooring, our three quarters of an inch of plywood, and we thought, well, what we'll do is since this is basically an inch thick, we will make, uh, we will take a, a chunk of wood and we will cut out uh, of that inch and a half. We will leave an inch and a, a half an inch high and then this inch and then this half an inch. Actually, I think we went to a full inch, if I recall correctly, out here. And we would do this. And so we would take this chunk of wood and we would sort of cut this notch out of it, making a molding. Again, this is the this is the trim. This is the ply. This is the flooring. All right. And we fiddled around with cutting this out of a piece of two inch thick uh, hickory. We uh, attempted to attach it and we really just weren't getting the kind of adherence we wanted particularly on this edge here even though we were sort of okay with uh we were using um cabinet screws to attach this way and that was sort of okay but we really weren't liking how it was attaching over here and so uh but we had alleviated you know if, if a wheel ends up over here and pushes, you're no longer getting that 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 levering action happening. It's more of a direct push, and this is more likely to hold that in place in a way that we were going to be happy with. So, um, we we actually cut a few of these. We tried it, really didn't like how it worked, and so we hit the drawing board again. And what we ended up building is something that looks like this. So we take our piece of flooring. Take our piece of plywood. And then what we put was over here a one inch high by quarter inch. So this is one inch thick and a quarter inch wide. And this is a piece of hickory. You could do this with... Um, a soft wood as well. I just wanted to finish it in hickory in particular because the flooring itself was a hickory and I wanted sort of a dark stained hickory and light stained hickory effect to this thing. That's just an aesthetic choice. Um, hardwood is obviously going to last longer than a softwood is, but this piece in particular isn't actually getting any abuse. So this is here just to hide the, the exposed edge of the flooring and the exposed edge of the plywood as sort of a cap that, that covers the piece of trim. Uh, all right, so then this this seam here was glued and attached with pin nails. The 23 gauge pin nail that we used for holding a lot of things in place. All right, so once we had done that, oh, and by the way, when we when we did the uh, corners on this, what we effectively did was um, one piece would come out like this, the next piece would come so it would end like this, the next piece would be like this, the next piece would be like this. The next piece would be so so each corner sort of overlapped the other corner uh, like this so you end up with and then we uh, effectively cut off these edges with a handsaw and then sanded uh, to make things line up nicely so so this piece attached to this side and then on top of this we went for a quarter inch overhang, which gave this trim sort of a nice look to it. And then this was a three quarter inch piece. And we went an inch and a half and just set this piece on top and then attached it with cabinet screws. Now, because we were working with this, with the flooring up as we were attaching this, this side piece, we actually sunk a couple of pin nails um, just to hold this face frame in, in place, uh, this top frame, so that uh, we could flip it over to put the screws in from underneath. And then we used uh, more of these quarter inch 
wide pieces as our spacer here to get this top frame sort of set as close as we could to properly lining up with everything else. And then this piece, uh, this face frame, was in fact uh, miter pieces. So the corners are, you know, 45 degree angles from each other like that. And we measured um, how wide this piece here was, plus a quarter on both sides, plus this quarter on both sides. And that came to, in our case, in our particular case, that, came, that meant that these outside corner to the equivalent outside corner here was 49 inches. Now, you'd have to measure your own, and depending on how you, you decided to trim things off here to cut the flooring to line up with the plywood, you may be off by a tiny little bit as far as that is concerned, but that's what these, the, that's what these measurements ended up being. So, that's generally how we worked our way through the design process and iterated in, and the net result is what I'm sitting on right now, and we're going to show you the actual assembly of what I just did. All right, so we're going to fasten these uh, planks down with some 23 gauge pin nails. It's getting a little difficult getting that to focus, but we apply glue and then use the air nailer with the pin nails to fasten that down and click everything together. Once you get the angle figured out, the pin nails pretty much disappear into the flooring and it all clicks together great. The last piece, since it's not going to have anything pin nailed, we clamped in place to let the glue dry. All right, then we squared off the edges and we are basically trimming the flooring so that it matches the base plywood. All right, and then we are setting up our table saw with a block and tape to get our quarter inch strips that'll be the trim on the outside of that. And then we can just run a piece through and then adjust the fence and run another piece through and we continue to get consistently sized pieces. Then we cut everything to width and uh, and then also set things up to cut our hickory one by twos that are that we described earlier. All right, so then we set glue and put those all on the sides again with pin nails. Those pin nails really disappear. You hardly even see them. Uh, so I really like using them and put that on all four sides and trimmed. And then in a second, we will sand that off and get a nice clean edge. There's a sanding block and uh, even everything out like that. I kind of like the look of this actually the way it is right now. Um, you could probably stop at this point if you weren't worried about, well, the problem of rolling off the sides and back, which is unsettling. Uh, but it looks good uh, at this point. All right, so then to cut our top trim pieces, we set the miter saw to 45 degrees and cut one end off of each piece. And then took that end and set it, everything up with a stop block. And it just so happened that the, the very end of this miter saw bench it was pretty much exactly the length we needed it to be. So we just set it up that way. And then another 45 degree angle cut at the other end gives us perfectly mitered 45 degree corners on these trim pieces. If it had been just a tiny bit shorter, we would have clamped a stop block to our metal track there and done that that way. But cut all those pieces, took them over to our chair mat, uh, taped the corners together so that we had a nice sealed thing, and then more 23 gauge pin nails went into everything. That then allowed us to flip the thing over, uh, which will happen here in a second, flip it over, and then we put uh, cabinet screws into each one uh, of the spots that we needed to, which is pretty aggressive all the way around to hold everything in place. The nice thing that this provides is that that top trim piece is not glued in anywhere, and so we could actually unscrew that and replace those pieces if like the chair were to ding up uh, the wood around the edges and we wanted to, I wanted to replace that, we could do that. Or if I wanted to refinish it, or if I wanted to change out the color or anything like that, basically we'd be able to remove them and put them back fairly easily. We could have countersunk these, uh, but I'm not terribly worried about it ruining the carpet because it's not really moving all that much. Um, so flip it back over put some 
Danish oil on as a finish, which I just really like on hickory. Uh, you could obviously use a polyurethane or something like that. And this is the finished product. And you can see with me in the chair and hitting the edges, the wheels you do not roll over. Uh, those rubber wheels don't really do any damage to the hickory. Um, you can see with my feet there that that sort of does become a problem sometimes. But otherwise, it, there it is. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our newsletter at obscurityworks.email and check out other videos on obscurityworks.tv and obscurityworks.social, which are YouTube and Facebook, respectively. Thanks.